Welcome back everyone, hope you're having an awesome day, and today we're going to be going through the Broken Bonds event and the uh, 1.10 patch update that comes through in Avatar Generations. Uh, if you like, click your little mailbox up here, we got a new area unlocked, Hegemon's Folly, uh, get some extra nature stones and uh, peace and chaos tickets and all that stuff, always very nice. So what we'll do is we'll go through the events, we'll go through any shop updates, any like see all the new items in there, uh, we'll go through the banner and all the stuff in there, and then we will unlock the new area at the end. So let's get into it. First off, we have the Ascension Bazaar uh, event going on. We've got the, you get some nature stones, some gold, some energy, and some three-star peace and chaos beads if you need those. Uh, just if you need to level up any of those characters. We've also got a peace and a chaos unit in the banner right now, so uh, good for leveling those up. Or if you have any of the other ones, then you can level them up too as well, I guess. Uh, as you clear, obviously, your Ascension Bazaar challenges uh, will get our nature stones, which is nice. Do some extra summons if you need any characters in those banners there. Uh, I'm going to lump all these together because they're pretty much the same thing. One star, incense, candles, and singing bowls. Meditation beads, offense, defense, and mind. Any one star ones, uh, copies of these will give you some extra gold, which is always nice. And if we scroll down a bit more, any two star, incense, candles, singing bowls, or any of the three basic meditation beads. Oh no, even the peace ones here as well. They're not the one star ones though. Not the one star ones. Uh, so if you need two star ones as well, uh, you'll get three star equivalents. Uh, so you'll get your in, you know, get ten two star incenses. You get three three star incenses, and uh, for each thing that you have there, always nice. You can get them from the um, boss battle shop as well. Not too hard. Uh, so nice easy way to farm that there if you like. And then skip tickets. If you as you earn skip tickets, you'll get some extra energy. Uh, obviously, you need energy to use the skip tickets, so it's a combo made in heaven. We also need to use energy in the uh, Broken Bonds event, so it's not too bad. All in all, not pretty, you know, standard event. As you play the game, you're going to be get, getting all this stuff pretty much. It's pretty much just free stuff on the table if you play every day, so not too bad. And then we have the Broken Bonds event. As you see, we get some Peace of Chaos uh, tickets here. Nature Stones, Energy, and Earth Element up... Uh, sorry, Earth Air Element upgrades. Uh, so as you complete Broken Bond challenges, you'll get some Peace and Chaos tickets. Always nice. As you use them, uh, you'll get some air element upgrades. I'm a little annoyed they don't also give you earth ones, or at least they have, like, maybe maybe they cut this down to, like, 20, and then they make, like, 40 for earth or something. I don't know. Just because uh, if you get Zhanzu, for example, you can't really use air element on him. That's the only problem. Uh, but all in all, I mean, free, free stuff is free stuff, you know? Complete adventures with Team Kyoshi. As you see, I was doing my just daily... Like, I tapped on all my stuff because I forgot to put them on timed nodes overnight. Uh, so I got some... I've already got progress on this. But as you complete adventures with Team Kyoshi Faction Heroes, so walking on all the adventure paths, uh, you'll get some extra energy. If you like, you can also use that energy to do a battle when you walk on between a node. And uh, it will count as one adventure path and an adventure battle uh, for those masteries if you need help farming those. And then spend energy in battles. Obviously, we get energy from here and the Ascension Bazaar event. Uh, if you spend 3,000 energy, you get, I think it's like 725 or something, 750 nature stones. Uh, so, yeah, 25, sorry. 725 nature stones uh, just for using energy, which you're going to be using anyway. So, always nice there. And, of course, uh, just a quick shout out. We also have the Avatar Timeline Kyoshi event. Make sure to get that skill coin. As you see, we're pretty close to that. We'll probably get that by the end of the day anyway. So we'll go into the shop now. Ascension Bazaar is the event that has the, uh, the shop right now. We have, uh, if you use your boss battle currency, you'll get all your, some two-star materials, incense candles, singing bowls, meditation beads. Uh, if you use your Anagi fins, your uh, Zuko fur, uh, Ang apples, which I love saying that, and your Boomy crystals. If you use all those, you'll get your two-star rewards there, so always nice. You can't really see it behind me, but incense there if you're a little confused there. And then as we move over here, one per day as well, we have Wolf Feathers, uh, Treasure, which is from the Icebound Labyrinth, the Earth Kingdom uniforms from Shen Guan, uh, and then uh, the Amashu tickets from Amashu. Uh, funnily enough, I get some three-star stuff here as well, and some talismans. Three talismans, always nice. Uh, the, I'll assume this is probably Kelsang, and this will be Zhanzhou. Uh, just guessing, <laughs> you know. And then uh, if you need extra Peace and Chaos tickets, uh, have some Amasha tickets, throw them in, get some of those tickets there as well. Always nice. Going into the rest of the store, uh, we've got a couple packs and that, but over here, if you use your Nature Stones for your beads, I probably wouldn't. Honestly, I'll show you where you can get some one-star beads if you really need some. 
Uh, but if you need some uh, three stars, using some boss battle coins isn't too bad there for that. Uh, if you need one star, if we quickly go to, where is it? I think it's Upgrade and Exchange. You can actually use some special and air at one star elements to get some of those if you need them. Uh, probably not really worth using nature stones, but up to you, I guess, you know. In terms of anything else we can buy, they usually have all the new stuff at the start. Ooh, hello. Got some relics here. That's interesting. New characters, it looks like. No resources. I'm just going to have a quick look in boss battle, see if there's anything new. Doesn't look like it. Alright, so just the summon store. So we're going to the summon shop. We've got Shershu Darts, only usable by Chaos units, it looks like. Uh, chance, 35% chance to inflict restrict on up to two enemies for one turn. Okay, ignoring resistance if the enemy has a debuff when the caster attacks on their turn. Okay, so Restrict, decreasing their defense and resistance, just like uh, Yun, if you have him. Uh, basically the same thing there. 35% uh, chance without no resistance, that's not too bad. If the enemy has a debuff. Uh, also, Chaos, that's... Who's Chaos use? We've got Janju, Moonslayer Zhao, and Dragon Dance Zuko. I suppose that his fire element is called an elemental debuff, so if that counts, that's actually kind of nuts, though. Uh, to throw on Dragon Dance Zuko, even. Uh, but that'll be interesting. And then we have Air Nomad Glider for air units, obviously. Permanently increase speed by 5% for each air element ally on the caster's team at the start of battle. Buy one of those, I think. Uh, yeah, that's kind of nuts, though. Uh, Mind Aang, uh, when he goes into Avatar State, does damage based on speed. So, at very least, let's say 15, but I'm pretty sure it says each air element ally, so I think that counts as himself. So that's an extra 20% speed, uh, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and then he also gains extra speed as well. My goodness. Oh boy, that's that's some big Boomba damage coming out there. So we'll have to check that out, obviously. Pirate Captain Keywalk, obviously, um, goes into a Shadow Clone. Has like a cheat death mechanic, essentially. And uh, really good stuns once you get her mastery up. Uh, first character I fully mastered. I uh, got her mastery level 4 on because, my goodness. Oh, Keywalk was so good. <laughs> Just keep smacking stuns on the enemy. Love it. Uh, Mastery Soldier. We had an event to get him. All the six copies. Uh, 20 coins is... Uh, it's a bit much. Uh, but really good for knocking out the front and uh, regen units. Uh, I've got a couple of videos on the channel if you want to see him in action. Uh, especially the Bokeh Army one. Uh, just smashing arena. Smashing fools in arena left, right and center. And then we have the Blade of Tagaka. Which was with the, uh, the Keywalk banner obviously. Permanently increase speed or crit rate by 8% when you inflict a negative state on the enemy. So, Keywalk has stun and heal block as both both of her attacks. Uh, so, as you hit one of those, you'll increase your speed or crit rate. Uh, that's why I build her with a little bit of crit damage, because usually you kind of bump that up enough. And then we have the Cabbage Cart, Earth Kingdom. So, Earth Kingdom units can use this. Remove all debuffs and negative states and heal for 10% of the caster's max health when the caster is inflicted with a negative state. So you get hit with a negative state, say if you're having trouble with the boomy boss battle, uh, one of these is pretty good. You just remove imbalance state off yourself, heal a little bit, and then you're able to take your turn. Uh, maybe even stack up those earth debuffs on the uh, on the enemy there. Uh, again, 20 coins, probably not worth it, but it's not bad if you if you have one. Alrighty, and then we'll go to the banner now. So as you see, we've got Kelsey and Jensu, not happy with each other at all. Uh, so we'll quickly go through that. Uh, I don't think there's anything in here. Uh, let's have a quick look though, just to make sure. Air Nomad Glider. Uh, nice that they've added that actually in here, so you're able to get it. If we're lucky getting some copies, my goodness, that'll be uh, kind of crazy, I reckon. Alright, so we'll go through all their kits and all the extra... We actually got four relics here, which is interesting. So we'll have to go through all those, obviously, as well. So uh, we'll start with Kelsane, because he's right at the top, why not? Uh, Peace, Air Element, Air Nomad... Team Kyoshi, uh, Sage is this one here. So Sage, if, you, if you're curious at what that little symbol there is. And Kyoshi, Timeline. Basic attack, Sweeping Storm. Deals storm damage to all enemies. Alright, so an AoE on basic, always nice. 50% chance to inflict knockdown on the enemy with the lowest speed for one turn. Okay. So if you have the lowest speed, you'll just do knockdown. Alright. And 50% is actually pretty decent. Increase turn bar of all allies by 5% for each enemy in a knockdown state. 
Okay, so you just use your basic. If there's knockdown enemies, you're going to increase the turn bar. All right. Storm damage inflicts rank one or two air element for two turns. All right, so you get one of the either one. Inflicts water element for two turns if any water element heroes are on the field. Okay, so if you have on the field, so does that include enemies? That'll be interesting. Does enemies really help me get through that bent, those bending muscle guitars on defense? My goodness. And then knockdown, obviously. Uh, basically, is stunned, incapacitated, and backline is exposed. Uh, if they're in the front line, obviously. Not too bad. I'd say it's pretty good, you know? The knockdown... Lower, lower speed um, might be good for, well, slow units, obviously. Living Typhoon. I'm glad they made this. They added that. I said, when whenever I said about the Kelsey, if they ever add Kelsey in the game, they need to have Living Typhoon as an ability or a passive or something because otherwise that's just a missed opportunity. So I'm glad they've done that here. Uh, Living Typhoon. Create a giant typhoon of air that surrounds the caster's team, removing negative effects from all allies. Okay. Enters a Guardian stance for one turn. Advanced skill becomes Gale Force for one attack. So Guardian stance will reduce the damage all allies take from critical hits by 50%. Only from critical hits though, so that's a little annoying. Allies, but not the caster, become immune to debuffs while this stance is active. Okay, so even if it's like ignores resistance, won't matter, you're immune to them. You just gain an immunity to that. So that's not too bad. And removing negative effects. All right, so kind of like a cleanser, cleansing unit. All right. Stop over. We'll see what our Gale Force does, eh? Gale Force deal vital damage to a single target, so damage based on the enemy's max health. Uh, so good against tanks and stuff like that. Disable advanced skill of the target until the caster is defeated in battle, ignoring resistance. Okay. Damage dealt increased based on the caster's defense. So the one question I'll have is, does that mean that you could theoretically disable the entire team's advanced skill? Granted, that's what, 20 turns? Because this is five, was it? Pull down five turns. It's like 20 turns to do that, uh, if that. That's still not bad. Um, disabling, even like, I'm trying to think of characters in Arena that have like a really good advanced, like Zuko, Iro, Zinfu... Mind Aang. There's a lot of characters I can think of, at least that I go against, uh, that disabling the advanced skill will just basically um, make them pretty useless. So it's not too bad there. And then passive ability, Enlightened Embrace. Increase attack and crit rate of each ally by 2% and increase defense of the caster by 5% for one turn when any ally is attacked while Guardian Stance is active. Up to five times a battle. I think it's five times a battle, because that's only... I mean, I suppose defense, 25% defense, but... it. I wonder if attack and crit rate is also by one turn, but that'll be interesting to see, because it doesn't say... Usually it should say it afterwards, and then it goes and increase defense, so that'll be interesting to see. And then Guardian Stance, it tells us. All right, so kind of like a tank cleanser kind of unit. Not too bad. I mean, if you need to do that, go for... I mean... Air, well, you're only going to get, you only use air units in Unagi, and yeah, so boss battle-wise, you probably weren't using that much. But still pretty cool. The Architect Zhanchu, uh, which is how apparently it's said, but I'm, again, I'm not very, I will butcher the name, I'm sorry. Uh, Chaos, Earth Element, Earth Kingdom, Sifu, Sage. Again, we'll just hold it here so you know what Sage is there. And Kyoshi Timeline. Uh, no extra ability, like no swappable skills, so it's just these three. Basic ability, Unseen Influence. Deal wounding damage to one target. Inflicts stun on the target for one turn. If immunity, tenacity, or skill nullifier are present. Removing those effects. Okay. Damage dealt cannot be counted and is guaranteed to land as a critical strike. Wow, that's actually kind of strong. Inflicting stun... Regardless if they have, like, immunity and all that stuff. Just, wow. Uh, wounding damage deals additional damage to the target and then to all their allies if the target has two or more negative effects active. Okay, so kind of a debuff, like a debuff heavy kind of attacker unit there, okay. Locus of Control. Deal nature damage to all enemies. My goodness. He's an Earth Element too. I'm already loving this character. Inflicts misdirect on each enemy for one turn, excluding targets in the back line. 
Damage dealt cannot be counted and is guaranteed to land as a critical strike. Uh, nature damage is kind of crazy on Earth units because uh, if you get Tier 3 Earth, they will essentially be stun-locked uh, for however many turns you have it there. Uh, so nature damage ignoring resistance is kind of strong. Misdirect. Reduce defense of the target by 50%. Deal additional penetrating damage to ally backline when the caster takes damage. Deal additional penetrating damage to ally backline when the caster takes damage. Oh, no, 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 sorry. I'm thinking, like, Zhu will take it. No, no. The character that has it, you hit them with misdirect, it'll hit the backline as well. So that's actually kind of, it's like double hitting, essentially. Um, kind of like Bounty, how it does additional penetrating damage uh, from Zinfu, which I'm sure a lot of people will know about. Uh, also reducing the defense and then just dealing extra damage. Might, that's actually kind of cool. Uh, knock out the back unit pretty easily if you can. And then we have, uh, I was going to say like Puppeteer or something. Grand Design. <laughs> Remove negative effects on the caster with a 50% chance to inflict a random negative state on an enemy when hit with a critical attack. So if you get hit with a critical hit, you will just remove your negative any negative effects on yourself. Okay. So hit with a crit, cleanse, and then 50% chance that you're going to put a random negative state on the enemy. So that could be like your stun, uh, maybe imbalanced state. I don't know if that'll be something that he can do. That's kind of crazy. All right. Very like a might... I get, like, Mind Ang vibes, like it's a Mind unit that does a lot of damage. That's what I'm kind of getting from him there. So, uh, pretty much going to be a... I think that'll be really... Especially as Locus of Control, that Misdirect ability is making me think all, kind of, all kinds of things, you know? And then we have our Relics, Kurok's Poem. Deal additional penetrating damage that ignores 25% of the target's defense when the caster attacks an enemy with two or more buffs active. Only usable by Sages. Okay, ignore, I mean, I don't really... That's two or more buffs. Okay, you, you deal with a couple of buffs. Uh, it kind of sounds like a... Like Suki. Like, I know Suki gets a lot of buffs. Even Zuko. Uh, just deal extra damage there. Not too bad. The price of progress usable by Sifus. Uh, just a heads up. You can throw this on, like, your uh, Dojo Master. He's a Sifu as well. So interesting there. 35% uh, chance to gain an extra turn when the caster lands a critical strike. Wow, hang on. Because Jan Zhu, all his abilities are critical strikes, aren't they? Okay, that's kind of strong. Not going to lie. Price of Progress looks like best one for Jan Zhu right now. Uh, Spirit Shrine. 25% chance to grant increased defense, skill nullifier, or invincibility to the ally with the highest attack for one turn when the caster attacks. That sounds like a... I mean, only peace units. That's pretty much Kelsang, uh, Avatar, Aang, and Yue, if you have either of those. Uh, I mean, pretty good for Kelsang, honestly. When the caster attacks, yeah, sounds like a pretty good one for Kelsang, honestly. Especially with that knockdown, and then if they're knocked down, you get turn meter as well. Kind of strong. And then Immobilizing Incense, only for Chaos Units. Decrease the defense and resistance of all enemies in a positive stance by 35% during the caster's turn. I mean, I could see Zuko, Dragon Dance Zuko using this. Zhenshu. Yeah, um, if you really want, like, an idea of what... You could probably use this against, like, Kyoshi... Uh, Kyoshi Warrior teams. So, like, anyone with all the Kyoshi Warriors, basically. Uh, they all go into stances. Uh, I mean, defense and, like, positive stance. Even Kyoshi herself, uh, Zinfu and all that. If you're having trouble with anything in stances and that, uh, that'll be good there. Alright, uh, I say... Alright, let's go unlock this new area. Let's see where it is. So, I think they said it was in the Moshi Sea, if I remember. There it is. Hegemon's Folly. So, you got to complete your Amashu event here. And we go to Hegemon's Folly, 3,000 Venture Points. Luckily, I have 5,000 of them. Let's just have a quick look around, hey? Okay. All right, let's not look around, I guess, then. Now, maybe we go log back in. All right, we won't worry about that for now. <laughs> All right, we'll quickly do a summon. I'll say we'll just do a quick, like, maybe we'll do... We'll do 30. Peace and Chaos Banner. We'll do a 30 pull on this. 
And we'll see what we can get, hey? No sunset. Damn it! <laughs> I know, right? Damn it, I got a sunset first shot. How could I? How could I be so angry at that? I've uh, got the price of progress already. It's looking really good. That's I really like this one. Uh, let's see. Did we get a unit, though? Did we get a unit? No. We got a gl glider. Kind of strong. Not going to lie. We also have no music playing in the background for some reason. Alrighty. I call that a win. Get we got a price of progress, so we're already prepped for Shanshu. We're just going to reset this. Get some music back on, because <laughs> why not? Uh, we'll do another. We'll do again. We'll do three summons. We'll see what we can get. Hey, oh my goodness! Maybe I should start that sunset counter. Hey, Twi and La. I actually don't think I have this one, so that's actually really good. Increasing attack of water elements, spirit shrine. All right, not too bad. We've already got two of the well, the two relics I actually wanted, so that's actually not too bad. Tough coin, of course. All right, number three. This won't be a sunset though. See, told you. I can tell it before it happens. Spirit Shrine again. My goodness. All right, then. Not a lot of luck, but that's okay. I call that a win right there. All righty, so that's pretty much everything in the update. All the stuff there. Let's check our events. We'll get our little uh, rewards here. Get some extra tickets. Always nice. And our little air upgrades. While I, while I redeem all this stuff, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know who you want in the banner. Uh, personally, um, after looking at that, I kind of want Zhang Chu. Uh, but the ability to get Kelsang if you need a uh, air unit is always really good too. Look at that. It's ten more ten more event stuff, so we'll have to get some uh, boss battles going. <laughs> Catch you around, everyone. I'll see you in the next video.